this is a coon run here in Iowa, but I trap a lot of cats in Arkansas and I would not fully hesitate. And so we're gonna set this. I don't have a 220 with me. I have a 160 because that's what we have to use in Arkansas. But this could be a 220 or a 160 here. I don't really have a real preference. They'll all kill a cat or a coon, but the I, I think right now, unless you were gonna go to a um, a Belial, it's it's I probably like the uh, Bridgers are the best. Um, a lot of guys cuss these Bridgers because they got small spring eyes on them. And they don't like to run up and down the side. So I take all my 220s, 160s, everything, and I grind these ears off. And that, that allows that to move up and down. I like the stakeizers because I can adjust my height. We'll see how much rock we got here. We got a lot of, I just put my knee on one. So I like this under this cover stuff. And this is not unlike exactly what I would set in, uh, in Arkansas. If I was here in Iowa, I'd have, I'd have more than, I'd probably put a couple 220s in here. Luckily, it looks like we can adjust if I got too much rock here. It's gonna go. The reason I like the stakeizers is I can deal with frozen ground. And that's why I went to them because I had always used like Justin's um, stretchers before that. Um, but I but once you get dealing with frozen ground, you can't get them in, out anymore. These things you can get them in the ground, frozen ground, and out. They also fit basically whatever trap you want. Now the secret here is what you guys can't see <laughs> is how high off the ground I am. See that's a six inch trap. We're at least six inches off the ground. I also, if you can see this, Justin, see how these triggers are modified? They got a 3 16 inch bar welded on each side. And that makes, that allows you to still set a full trigger. But when they bump that trigger, it goes. I don't care about little stuff. I, I want my main opening open. But after that, I don't care. And that's really it. They will crawl up. If you want to get on this, they will crawl up into that. That'll prevent coons from crawling over. Because coons, well, they're notorious. You put a 220 on the ground, they'll step on the top, mm -hmm. walk right over the top. You raise it up. And uh, I started doing this. Started when when I went south. I knew I was forced with these 160s. To try and get the coons to dedicate and and so i started i just thought well rather than trying to make them i knew it was going to be a problem with them wanting to go over the top and uh so i just started raising them up the coons and the possums you'll still catch them the skunks um but it 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 whacks them cats cats run the same place as coons do just think of that, that cats run all them dry run trails that them coons run And if you notice, I paint them traps brown. They're not black. They're a light brown. It's called satin mut nutmeg. Is the color of the of the color of the color that I like. Um, but if, as you can see, it blends in perfect with that brown grass. Mm -hmm. You cannot see it. Um, I do like to run circle triggers. 
I would if I were if I change anything on the trap eventually if a trigger breaks I put a circle trigger on it. How do you get rid of the paint smell after you paint it? Don't worry about it. You don't worry about it. Okay, I was just curious. No, cats don't care. Coons don't care. Okay. Um, I painted traps and set them the next day. Okay. It's just rust oleum. A rust oleum satin nutmeg. That's the color I like. <laughs> <laughs> You do anything with them stakeholders to keep them from spinning? If you do have one that's going to spin, I might take a weed and wedge it down in there. I don't like to weld anything on them to keep them from spinning because now when you do start dealing with frozen ground and you need to spin it to get it out, you can't. So that's why that's why I don't weld anything on them. It's already set. You missed. <laughs> you stake it off to the side or you just use a stake laser stake -a -laser. yep if i get a big tore up i'll just move down the trail but this is exactly like what i would i would be running in arkansas and i would i would set this here too i'd have a couple 220s in this here at home but say we're mandated down there to run 160s so that's what i had you worry about the death smell yes um I do think when you when you start pinning a coon down, if you pin him down in this, um, there's a there is an avoidance that they will avoid that because of some smell that the coons come out from that dead. A lot of times, if you can move down the trail, they'll come right through and you'll whack him. But um, there is an avoidance that that you will get by not moving. I mean, you'll, you'll catch a certain percentage, but you'll notice that you'll start getting some avoidance. So the best thing you do at that point is move or have some kind of extension. You know, if you were up on a crick bank run like this and you could extend him and flop him over the edge. Mm -hmm. But in this circumstance, there's lots of room here to move. questions would you typically just set two in a situation like this or would probably, you set more probably but i mean it ain't gonna hurt anything to set more than that you know two to three a lot of my locations down there in arkansas i don't have room some of them are just a one set location you know but if you're in the in the right away in the road ditch you know and you could set two here and two over there But that'll, it'll pick up anything that runs down that trail. I mean, mink will hop up and go through that too. And that's that's the nice thing about the circle. Circle triggers a little bit longer trigger, loop around. Um, they they really seem to want to center in on them circle triggers. Um, I, I really like them once they once I go to those. Um, so you would say that a 160 is just as lethal as well, a 220? Probably more. Probably more. Okay. Probably more. You, you're going to get more head catches with the 160 um, than you are with the 220, where you might get a body encased. Um, when you when you modify that trigger the way I have it, that really cuts down on on body encasements. I mean, it it it's a head catch, perfect catch, just about all the time. But I'm into blending them. I, I like them the color of that grass um, to blend them in, you know, just kind of thinking snaring. Um, I don't want anything that's big and black and sticking out to show, to show them that it's there. I mean, I don't really even have a problem with just a rusted trap. You know, a rusted 220 is going to blend in there just as well. You know, that has had nothing done to it. <clears throat> Just that's an 18 inch stakeholder. Um, I have I have a lot of 24s that I'll run around home here too, um, but that allows you to even raise it up more. But because um, that eight, you got 18 inches there, you got six out. You've only got about 12 of it in the ground. Um, I do a lot of times. I do sharpen the ends of that of that equalizer um, to aid into getting into the frozen ground. 
but I don't deal with the frozen ground much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> run with all this yeah, crap already right, here. Nice tunnel going yep, through. Yep, yep, yep. The other thing I like, if you, if you were in the right of way, and and you had you had a lot less vegetation, what I like, what I really like to do, is I'll take these ragweeds. The longer I can, the better. And I'll put them out like this. You want to rub with that? You about got me. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funnel them in. I want, yeah, I want both sides. I want a funnel. And I want it white out here funneling down to the trap. I, I feel they get in this. And if they do have a deal where they don't want to go through that trap, they can't turn around. They, they can't turn around, they won't want to back out, so they'll go on through it. Um, that's, I use ragweed a lot for that. When, when, and I know Dean likes to put cedar boughs clear over the top. If you have them. That, <coughs> but this is usually, cool. usually there's ragweeds around there. And I, like I said, just get it this, about this width and just funnel them into it. And then when he gets in, he he can't turn around. That that really helps on on pinning him in there and getting him through there. When you start to get an avoidance issue with them, yeah. but yeah, I like I like to treat them like a snare. You know, the same. I want it blended. I want some crap hanging a little bit so they can't see it. And you I mean there's right that's perfect right there. But lift lift her off the ground. Yeah. Get it up. Lift her off the ground. If you guys are setting them down on the ground or this far off the ground, they're they're them big coons want to come up there. If you ain't got a lot of stuff over the top, they're gonna. St I mean, I've seen coon tramps right on the top of the dog where they went right over the top. Well, you're definitely right about the cats run down the coon trails. Cats but... run coon trails. Yep. Oh, these are catching all over. Yep. Yeah, a lot of that cat trapping, you just think coons. You just think coons. They're they're in that same that same cover. Yeah. You know, if you if you got a fence row, you're looking at this fence row that's 50 feet wide and encased with mulberry trees and all that stuff. There's always going to be a coon trail running right down the middle of it, and them cats run the same place. Yeah. So that's. That's all I got, guys. See, they, I've caught them in dukes, um, whatever. Um, I like the sleepy creeks that you can't get anymore. They got a 220 spring on them. I hate the sleepy creek 220s. They don't kill worth worth crap, but the the the, the, the 160s with the 220 springs on them do. Um, but these these with the uh, um, Yeah, so this is a Bridger, and it's a Magnum, which I don't think you can get anything but a Magnum anymore. The only thing I don't like about the Bridgers is I hate these flat safeties. Um, I, I do like to rig up all my 220s. 220s, 160s, um, 330s, I all rig, I like rigged up like this. Um, the reason is, is because there's nothing I hate more than that chain. I'm trying to set that trap, and that chain now takes and runs down here at the same time that I'm trying to put my safety on. And I'm, I'm messing around one-handed or whatever, and now I'm fighting that chain that slid down here. So the bridgers come like this, but I rig up all my 330s and 220s with the same system so that the chain I'm not fighting that chain down on that spring I mean it it's just a convenience deal I mean it's not going to do anything for your efficiency it's just a convenience deal I don't like to fight it same deal like I said I think I already mentioned I grind them ears off that's a really good with the with the bridgers because they've got strong small spring ears a lot of guys cuss those spring ears um, but just take a grinder grind that off 
to the don't get into the weld. It's you know you just take enough off that it's easy to slide over the top. <laughs> 